rings. Today we are going to teach you how to make a whole lot of jump rings. Uh, you'll find in a previous video where we made one and just a few jump rings. Today we're going to make a bunch and we're going to use the handy dandy tool, the jump ringer, which you will find has its advantages and its disadvantages. So let's go ahead and get started. So I've already picked out a perfect size mandrel that I think would work beautifully in our jump ringer. Now you'll find that when you buy the jump ringer, you can buy mandrels in every size. You really don't have to spend the money on it if you don't want to. You can go to the hardware store and find tubing in brass or copper or wood even. It doesn't really matter just as long as you find a mandrel that works beautifully for the size you need. So for this, I've got a steel mandrel and I'm going to start with my 18 gauge brass. So we are going to go head over to the jump ring. And first, before we do that, we're actually going to put on our safety glasses because I always want you to protect your eyes. They're very valuable. So, we've got our wire, and to put our wire into our jump ringer, we're actually going to go ahead and squish one of our ends. Or make a lot of noise, as I like to say. So we've flattened one of our ends, and you'll see why in just a second. We're going to come over to our jump ringer, and we're going to place our mandrel in here and turn it down so it tightens. Before I get it completely tight, I actually want to take this flattened end of the brass and I want to put it in so it gets underneath one of the teeth. And then I can tighten it. And hopefully I get that in there perfectly so it's going to turn nicely. So we're also going to put on a glove because we found the hard way that you can really slice up your fingers. So with the glove on, I'm going to go ahead and turn my jump ringer so that you can see that I have the brass going pretty taut, one next to the next, so it's a nice uniform coil. And I will take this all the way to the end till I run out of wire. And this comes in handy if you need to make a bunch of jump rings, if you're doing a bracelet, like a Byzantine bracelet, or you just have a lot of projects with jump rings. Now I've gotten to the end, and you'll notice that it snaps, which is why I had on the gloves, as you can see this little end here. So happy that I had my gloves on so I didn't get cut. So I'm going to go ahead and take out my mandrel and you'll find that I've got a really nice taut coil. Very handy. Now I could have filled up this entire mandrel, but just for our purposes of doing a video, we're just going to do a little bit. So we're going to go ahead and take it off our mandrel and I will go ahead and clip the ends because we obviously don't need them. And yes, they do fly. And that's why we have our safety glasses on. We've got our vise here that's going to hold it in here, so we're going to actually place that in the valley and put our plate back on top, and we're going to tighten it up so it's going to be in there nice and tight. Now you can start this with your fingers. I say that. <laughs> Once we get it in there by our fingers pretty tight, we're going to go ahead and tighten it up with our Allen wrench as well because we don't want this to go anywhere. So our Allen wrench is going to make sure that this little guy's not going anywhere. Okay, we're not going anywhere. You'll see that that is in there really tightly. So now that he's in here, we're going to go ahead. We've already set up the flex shaft so that it's got the cutting tool on there. So you'll see that this flex shaft is set up so it perfectly will fit in here with the blade going to cut right through those jump rings. Now this takes a motor that's pretty strong. We tried this earlier with a motor that wasn't so good and it didn't work, so we needed the stronger motor. But you'll see, when I hit this, it'll actually, you'll see the saw going. Now we're going to go ahead and put some lubrication on this because it'll make life a little easier. So we're going to go ahead and place our saw in there. And we're going to start it up without going anywhere first. Because I'm just building up momentum until I get to a good speed. And when I feel it's at a good speed, I'm going to go ahead and zip through everything. Hopefully quickly and you might see some smoke. So let's go ahead. And it's going through pretty nicely, but there's a lot of jump rings to cut through. through everything. Let's go ahead and loosen this up. Now I can tell you this bugger's hot because I can see the smoke coming. So we'll see if we cut through everything. It felt like it went through everything, but you never know. So we'll loosen up a little bit at a time. I'm 
to check this one out completely. Once you get him where he's going enough, you can actually do it with your fingers. And look, they look like they're all stuck together. That's because they sort of melded together. But in actuality, if you hit it with your fingernail, you'll see they're all individually cut. So you've got a bunch of jump rings. Looks really pretty this way too. But they actually are all cut. It's just that they kind of stuck together. But you've got a zillion little jump rings. So there you have it, a bunch of jump rings. So if you needed to make a bracelet, you have a bunch of them. Now there is a downside to this. First of all, it does cost money to buy this little tool. But if you are doing a lot of like needing of bracelets, it comes in really handy. But the other thing is, sometimes when it cuts, it may make a little funny edge. I'll we'll probably get a close-up shot on this after we're done, or maybe we'll splice it in there, but I don't know that you can see it. Underneath the jump ring is a tiny little, we'll say, burr of metal. That, okay, yeah, you can file it off there if you really want to, but if you're really doing a project with a lot of jump rings, this is a really efficient way to do so. Otherwise, you can always Google jump rings and see who out there is selling jump rings that are already cut and they've been tumbled and ready for you. A lot easier that way, too. But if you want to do it yourself, this is a handy tip. I'll be bringing you more tips as the days go on. If you'd like to know more about my work or more of my classes, please go to my website at riasmithdesigns.com. That's Ria, R-I-A. Thank you so much, and have a great day.